Hey folks, dude here. Okay, it's part three of, um, well, the knife collection. Okay, remember when I said I had a lot of stuff? Okay, I mean, I got a lot of stuff. And I mean stuff that comes back from, well, 80s, 90s, and all the way to, well, current. And what else do I have to play with? Well, you got stuff like this. This is a copy of an Almar. Uh, give you some idea? Yeah. One of these, okay, let me put you back to the Wayback Machine. I flew up to Maine back in the early 90s. I flew with one of these. Um, the guy goes, well, what do you have something this big for? Um, I'm going up to Maine. They're like, okay, sure, have fun, no problem. And that was in my carry-on. Oh, things have degraded and become highly suckitudinous. Okay, what else do I play with? Um, I also speak Cold Steel. Yeah, Cold Steel Light. Fairly nice little knife. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's kind of interesting. Uh, variation in the theme. Okay, uh... Cold Steel used to make something called a Rescue. Yeah, their version of a carpet knife, um, razor blade, whatever you want to call the thing. Uh, they called it the Rescue Knife. Notice it's got the sheep foot. You can get it underneath the seat belt, cut the guy out. Eh, I don't even know if they still make them or not. Got it. Cool in the collection. Am I going to use it? Probably not, but it's kind of cool anyway. Uh, what else do I play with? Okay, remember I had the uh, Valley Song? These you can find. These are actually very nice little knives. Now, a quick instructional thing. How do you handle a butterfly knife? First off, you always put the lock underneath your pinky. Always. And here's why. It's locked. It's not going anywhere. Notice, sandbar stag handles. Very nice little knife for the cash. Okay, here's the way it works. You break the lock with your pinky. You flip the knife down. The knife always goes... Okay, let me run through a normal speed here. It goes over down, flip, back. Always. Over, down, flip, back. Over, down, flip, back. Over, down, flip, back. Relock with your pinky. Always. If you handle it like this, you cannot help and not be cut. If you handle it wrong, you will be cut. Don't do that. Always handle it so you are always starting correctly. Now, I've been playing with these things long enough, I don't get cut. Is it possible? Yeah, very possible. As a matter of fact, I did that wrong way, and it just bit me. That's why you don't do that. And I did that for demonstration purposes. Um, you notice I have a lot of scars there. That's why. I don't care if I get bit by a knife. That means it likes me. Don't do that. You'll bleed. Um, notice that's a small nick, so I'm barely bleeding. Do I care? No. It's only a little bit of blood. Alright, now, remember I said I had a lot of, well, a lot of Swiss Army knives? Um, I wasn't kidding. There's a bag. There's a bag. Um, I got a bunch more. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, they're Swiss Army knives. They're, well, they're not really a dime a dozen, but, um, the TSA, when they take stuff from people, they don't like to share. Okay, so what is my crowning glory that I received um, as a good piece of kit? <sighs> yep, it's real, folks. This is not crap. This is the real deal. That's right, folks. This here is the Spyderco Diver Probe. How old is it? Um, okay, let's put this in perspective. The serial number is six. 56. Very, very cool piece of kit. Don't encounter it much anymore. They're around. They're kind of scarce. If you find one, buy them. I see these things in gun shows and knife shows, and they are never, ever cheap. Grab them up when you get the chance, because, um, well, there's a finite supply. You're not going to run into them very often, and when you see them, buy them. Uh, I can't impress that upon you enough to buy the Spyderco Diver Probe. They are very, very scarce. Okay, what other knives do we have to play with? Um, well, I showed you all the spider codes. Okay, all right. Let me have a little fun here for a second here. Spider co. When they make something, sometimes they make something fairly unique. This one drove me crazy. Notice, there's no lock, there's no nothing. How do you close this little booger? I've given this to people and I've driven them absolutely out of their gourds. 
you push down on the scale. See, that's what actually makes it unlock. Kind of cool. Really annoying, but very, very cool. But still, very flippin' annoying. Okay, um, in terms of spider codes, you have all different ranges of all different sizes and all kinds of different makes, manner, shape, and form. Um, I know I'm redressing spider codes again. I kind of really like spider codes. That's why I'm kind of going back to them again. Um, in terms of the actual spider codes I own, okay, maybe I showed you the one Q. Okay, <laughs> this is me be <laughs> this is me being me, folks. Why did I get another Spyderco Q? Um, because, well, it's it's a knife. And what do knives have? They've got blades. <laughs> this was a special run for Blade Magazine. Um, they're kind of scarce. If I could find the H&K one, believe me, I am buying it, man. Um, these things are never cheap. Okay, I said you could find them everywhere. Yeah, if you got the cash, you could find them everywhere. Uh, they show up once in a while on eBay and buy them. Um, what are the things that are kind of unique about Spyderco's? Uh, well, okay, Spyderco does something really mean. They, they make a knife, people get to like it, they, they stop making it, and um, you get guys like, I hear voices who are going, dude, I love the worker. Okay, let's put this in perspective. If you look at any of the spider codes and their numbers and how they go, there's a model number. The worker is C O one. It was the very first spider code they ever produced. Dude fell in love with them. Um, he bought a couple. They stopped making them. He broke all the ones he had. He lost one of the other ones he had. He's now frantic. Um, what do you do in that case? Uh, I suggest you fall in love with another spider co. Um, Probably not something that small, but you know, these do come in handy. Um, now, in terms of everyday carry, okay, let me give you a little demonstration here. It'll take me one second to find what I'm talking about. Everyday carry, what does the dude get with him? Always. I've always got my Spider Co. Always. I've always got my Goddard. Always. What else does the dude carry? Um, well, Besides his Blockbuster card. Do I even go to Blockbuster anymore? I, I don't think so. Um, but this is always in my wallet. That's right, folks. That is a Spyderco wallet knife. Very discontinued. And I think it's starting to rust a little bit. But that comes right off. Cool. Uh, yeah, these are very cool knives. You can get them with 50-50 and all in one edge. And the best part about it is it folds up. And I've almost gone through checkpoints with this thing in my wallet because I forgot about it. Oops. Yeah. Um, needless to say, uh, Corridor Wallet from Hell. I've been carrying this thing since... Jeez. Oh. The mid-80s, 90s. Oh, forever. It's fallen off my car. It's been run over by other cars. It's still good. I like stuff that works. Notice, even with the busted scale, a little bit of tape, I'm still carrying this thing. I love my spider codes. I love my Swiss Army knives, and um, they're my everyday carries. All right, so I'm running out of steam here. I'm running out of stuff, and um, this one wasn't so well planned. The other two kind of worked better. Uh, well, what do we go to from here? Um, well, I'm not going to take up any more of your time, and... Um, ooh, wait a minute. I think I found another knife to show off. Hey, wait a minute. Come on out of the closet here for a second and visit. Come on. Come on out of the closet and visit. That's right. This one's also in the gun closet for zombie incursion. Oh, yeah, Bubba. We're talking about the military machete. Absolutely, positively, one of the best things you could have if you're encountering... Zombies or um, itinerant uh, zombie doggies. Good stuff. Uh, military machetes are available on eBay. Uh, the sheath. The sheath is cool. It's got a flip down sharpener so you can touch up the edge. And uh, you might notice this one's kind of virginal. That's because it's always in the gun closet. And, uh, well, it's hanging out just in case. Notice though, I stopped bleeding. That's how good a cut it was. All right, folks. Um, I show knives off for you. I bleed for you. And, um, well, I show off more of my crap for you. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this series of me just kind of drinking too much coffee and showing off all my knives I've collected over the years that I have entirely too many of. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, folks, keep them in the ten ring.
Ernest.